All right, 2023 and three-time PGA champion Brooks Kepka joins us. Brooks, first off, congratulations. And how's it feel to have your third one make a trophy? Feels doing good. Um, yeah, this one's this one's definitely special. I think this one's probably the most meaningful of them all, uh, with everything that's gone on, all the uh, all the crazy stuff over the last few years. But uh, it feels good to be back and um, and get number five. That's great. We'll uh, start taking questions, starting at Mike 11. Hey, Brooks, congratulations. Uh, how much did that win in Orlando, you know, and now the runner-up position at the Masters kind of set you up for this? You know, were those instrumental in the process, or was it when you're back, you're back? Uh, I don't know. I've been playing good for a while. I felt like I, kind of, I knew I was back kind of in January, uh, just needed to kind of a little bit some reps I think in the beginning of the year just to kind of get get things going and feel a little bit more comfortable but I mean I've been playing good I feel like I've been in contention to win every week probably since yeah probably since Orlando so uh, I've just been playing good and very pleased with the way I'm playing and just need to continue it let's go up to 13 and then 12 Brooks only 19 guys have ever won five you know you're 20 now it, it means a lot for history I know that you at times have said like I don't care about history I'm just tearing up the next one but I wonder, just perspective-wise, like it's a pretty big deal that you're one of the great golfers of all time in a lot of ways. Like, how does that feel to sort of know that that's rare air that you're in? Yeah, it's it's crazy. I think I try not to think of it right now. I think uh, I mean I do care about it. It's just it's tough to really grasp the situation kind of while you're still in it. I think. Um, I mean, probably when I'm retired and. Um, you know, I can look back with with Jenna and, and my son and and kind of reflect on all that stuff. I think that'll be that'll be truly special. But I mean, right now I'm just trying to collect as many of these things as I can. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Hey Brooks, congratulations! You seem so calm and in control out there today, even smiling down number 12 fairway. What was your mental game plan? What was your mindset going into today's round? Just keep doing what I've been doing the last three days. Uh, just be aggressive and just go make a bunch of birdies. And, um, you know, that was, I, I knew you were going to make some some mistakes today, but felt like I made sure that they were on the correct side of the hole, made some clutch putts coming down on the back nine again, which I, I did yesterday as well. So very, very pleased with the way the putter's rolling and, um, you know, just excited to win. What is it about that back nine? I think you were seven under for the last three rounds. and all the birdies on the backside today. What is it about the back nine that makes you feel so comfortable? Well, the front nine is definitely a lot harder. Uh, that's six, six tee shot, or six, seven, eight, nine are, are definitely tough holes. Maybe not so much eight, but six, seven, nine are definitely tough holes. And, um, you know, even four is kind of a tough driving hole because you can kind of put it through the fairway. To, if you do put it on the left side, it's, it's difficult. So um, I think there's definitely more chances on the back. Let's go over to five and then four. Brooks, would, would you please share now what it was you learned after after the Masters and how did it contribute to the victory today? Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't have, I don't think, won today if it wasn't, that didn't happen, right? Um, definitely take it and keep using it going forward uh, for each each event, each major, uh, anytime I'm in contention, but uh, I'm not going to share. I can't give away all the secrets. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you heard from Greg Norman yet? I, I've called my wife, and that's it. That's the only person I'm really interested in talking to right now. I haven't, uh, I haven't texted. Uh, my boys are here, so uh, I'm just hanging with them and, and talking to my wife. And I can feel my phone buzzing as we're even talking right now. So I don't know. Um, I, last I looked, I think there was like 600 text messages. So I'll go through them. Four. Without prying um, and trying to re reveal to follow up on that question, how big was it for you to? use something that was that some might consider a failure to turn it into a positive how important that was that for you in in this I, i've always learned more from the four times i've finished second than the i guess the five times i've won now um, i think failure is how you learn uh, you get better from it you realize what mistakes you've made each time i've i've kind of made an adjustment um, it's more mentality than it is anything. There's not really a golf swing or anything like that. It's just, you know, you, you're going to play how you play. But mentally, you can kind of figure things out. And right, I'm always trying to get better. So just trying to find that different, that little edge, um, just to poke and pry inside my head. And really, really, I think the big key is just being open and honest with yourself. 
And if you can do that, then you'll uh, you'll be miles ahead of everybody else. And just uh, Bryson was talking about how this not 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 validates the uh, live tour, but is a, was an important moment for for your tour. Can you appreciate that um, with your victory here? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it helps live, but I mean, I'm more interested in my own self right now, to be honest with you. I think, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a huge thing for Liv, but at the same time, I'm, I'm out here competing as an individual at the PGA Championship, so uh, I'm just happy to take, the, take this home for the third time. We'll go 11, followed by 7 and 2. That was actually pretty much my question. The, uh, you know, obviously the first ever and will always be the first ever representative from the Live Tour to win a major. Is there, is there, is there any pride with that? Whether, I know obviously you're playing individually, but is there any pride as a representative of the organization? Yeah, I think so. Uh, look at it as I think I was the first guy to win two two live events. So um, you know, win to win a major is is always a big deal, no matter where you're playing. And I think that's uh, all it does is I just think I guess validates it for myself. Uh, I guess maybe if anybody doubted it from Augusta or whatever, any doubts anybody on TV might have or whatever, that, uh, that I'm here, I'm back, I'm here. Thank you. Brooks, thanks for making the time, man. Uh, I guess Blake is officially in the running as a baby name now. Is that official? Yeah, I got to call PMT guys. Uh, I'll call Big Cat and PFT whenever I get a chance. Uh, probably going on the way to the plane or something like that. I'll give him a shout. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a little bit later, though. <laughs> Brooks, I'm just wondering what it, what your celebration plans might look like tonight. Uh, probably pretty chill tonight. Just want to get home, go see uh, – Get back home, chill. But I would say tomorrow with the Panthers game, it'd probably be a large, large tailgate, large, long afternoon. <laughs> and then um, Claude Harmon was kind of talking about earlier this week that during that final round of the Masters, you might have been letting a couple shots affect you a little bit too much, more than they normally would. Is that kind of what was going on in your head? No, no, it wasn't what was going on. It was, uh, it was something completely different. It was something I took to the first tee. But um, I think. Look, I learned from it. I'm, I'm very pleased with what I took from it, and I'm, I'm pleased with the honesty I was, I was able to, you know, dive in into. Uh, my best friend, actually, my brother's caddy, my best friend. Um, I think we stayed up probably most of the night, just uh, chatting about it, and he kind of ripped into me pretty good about it. So made sure, and uh, he was texting me all last night about it, and um, making sure that uh, I wouldn't fall in the same trap. Up to 13, then 10. Brooks, 16 was obviously a pretty pivotal moment in today's round. What was your perspective on what Richter was going through? And then you hit your shot maybe 10 seconds after he finally hit his. I was kind of wondering what was going through your mind in that moment. Uh, I, I couldn't see, but I mean, I had a good idea what was going on. Uh, it looked like it probably buried under the lip, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, yeah, they, were, they took a couple minutes just to figure out the drop and just kind of figure out what was going on. But uh, I don't know, I'm a pretty fast player, so. I was, I mean, we had probably what, probably took three minutes in total just to kind of, for the moment he, uh, I guess, was preparing for the original shot in the bunker and then the drop in situation. So we already knew the yardage. We knew everything going into it, and the wind kind of pretty much stayed the same. So it was, uh, we talked about it for a good minute. When you hit that really close, did you, did you feel like, okay, like I've done, like in this hole, in this moment, I've, I've made a huge, you know, momentum swing or something? Yeah, I thought so for sure. I thought, Honestly, it was a tougher putt. It was so downhill, and it was kind of burnt out. So if it, I even told Rick before I hit it, I was just going to die it and pick the high line. And I mean, if it didn't hit the hole, it was definitely going three, four feet high. But uh, yeah, I'm just happy that one went in. I think it was a big momentum boost. Give me a little ease going in 17, 18. 10. I don't know how much you're able to follow what was going on with Michael Block today, the hole in one this whole weekend. Just to kind of share this weekend with him have him alongside the trophy ceremony just your thoughts on that yeah it's been it's been super cool he's a great dude he's been fun i haven't i didn't really get to hang out with him until uh after the round and just kind of chat with him but yeah i was walking up uh was part, part five 13. i was walking up 13 and we heard the roar and i wasn't it sounded like a hole in one roar um we weren't sure maybe someone hold out in 14. you know it's kind of coming from the same area and i asked one of the camera guys and they told me that it was mike so I thought that was pretty special. Me and Rick were laughing about it. And uh, yeah, drinks are on him. So run the tab up. 
<laughs> and then you obviously start the major season second and first. Just how do you try and carry this momentum into what could be a pretty historic year, perhaps? Just keep doing what I'm doing. It's working so far. Um, back to having a chance pretty much every time I tee it up. So I'm very pleased with the way I'm playing. I like the way um, I've worked with everybody. It's it's been um, it's been a lot of fun. One. So Brooks, I, I wonder if moments like this are a good time to reflect on on the injuries, all those years going in Asia and Europe, and like how tough the journey is. No? Yeah, I mean, I don't. It's tough to kind of reflect in the moment. I think probably the best reflection comes like a day or you know a couple of days later. Well, definitely not tomorrow. I won't be sober. So, um, yeah, I'd say I'd probably give it a week on this one. This one would probably tastes a little better. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm I'm excited and you know it's it's so cool to look back at where I've where I've come traveling. I remember back to the Challenge Tour days, going to Kenya, Kazakhstan, and all those cool places, and getting to see the world and. Um, yeah, to, to be out here now and win five major championships is, is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do 12, 8, and 14. Brooks, can you comment a little bit about Ricky Elliott and how he's helped you get back to this place? Yeah, Rick, uh, it's kind of funny because Rick was, Rick, <laughs> I, I forced him to come out uh, when Dr. Elichosh was doing surgery. No one wanted to come with me. My brother was playing the Honda Classic. So my parents were staying there. Uh, Jenna had just had surgery on her ankle, so she couldn't fly out there. Um, so I, I made Rick come. And Rick spent probably two, two and a half weeks with me out in L.A. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel bad for him that he was, uh, he was stuck there with me for a while. I think he was, he was tired of me. I was tired of him. But, uh, look, he's, he's, I don't think he gets enough credit for being as good of a caddy as he is. Um, you know, caddying's a lot about reading the people, uh, reading your player, knowing what they're going to do before they even do it, and kind of sense sense the moment of what to say, what not to say. And um, I, I think, honestly, I've, I thought he's one of the best for a long time, and I, don't, I just don't think he gets enough credit. Maybe even from me. Hey, Brooks. Um, obviously, we got a, got a peek of you at bottom because of the show, and you know, I, I just kind of wondered at those times how much were you doubting, questioning, whatever, um, yourself physically versus, like, yourself, like, can I go do that again, me, like, the player? Uh, it's tough to explain. It's, it's very hard to explain. It's just, like, you, you can't fathom how difficult it is just to get going. Um, I mean, it was a lot worse than I let on to you guys, to let on to everybody. Um, like I said, I think maybe only five, six people really know the extent of it. Um, and it's just, it was hard. I mean, cold weather, it's achy. It was, I mean, the swelling didn't go down till maybe a couple months ago. But, uh, I mean, so that's almost, what, two years? Um, it, it's been a long road, but uh, it's, look, that's who I am. I'm open and honest. Uh, I know I seem like this big, bad, tough guy on the golf course that doesn't smile, doesn't do anything. But if you catch me off the golf course, I'll let you know what's going on. And um, like, I'm happy they got that side, right? Um, that's that's truly me. And uh, some people might hate it, some people uh, might dog it. But uh, at the end of the day, it's just me. Did, just to be clear, did you ever uh, consider retirement? Uh, I don't know if I considered retiring, but I knew I wasn't going to. If I couldn't play the way I wanted to play, then I was I was definitely going to give it up. I mean, the thought definitely kind of crossed my mind. Yeah, Brooks, for those of us who have never felt the pressure of a, a major championship, what does it do to your body specifically? Like, when you feel nervous, does your heart race? Do your hands do anything? Do you have to slow down? Or is it not that different than just a normal round? I don't know. Um, to me, it's excitement, right? I've got to slow down for me. I've, I've got to start walking slower because uh, my stride just wants to keep going. You want to get the first one, the ball, hit it, and just play the quickest round of golf ever. Um, but yeah, I, I've got to slow down. I've got to take my time and, and really just kind of assess things. But I. It's difficult to say. I don't think my hand, my hands, my heart rate gets up. It's, um, 
I'm t I try, I don't think about the next shot. I always just think about what's going on. Like if you walk down 16, I'm not thinking, oh, you know, I got to do this on 17 or 18. I'm just thinking whatever the next shot might be. And then until I run out of shots. Is that something that you've learned from over time of, of how to take that one shot at a time? Or is that something that's just kind of come naturally to you? Mm, better both. I think I've definitely learned. Uh, I probably learned the most the last time I was here in 13 when I played with Tiger on Sunday. Um, that was interesting. Uh, I spent nine holes watching him. I, I've done that my entire life. Grew up watching the guy, um, and then took me till 10 when Ricky's first week caddying for him. He told me to stop watching him. Um, but it's it's just naturally what you do, right? Like I, I grew up in the Tiger era, so I loved watching the guy and. Um, it was just naturally what I did for the first nine holes, and then it got better. Mike Five. Brooks, is there a moment that sticks in your mind when you thought having that trophy again or, or another major wouldn't happen? Oh, yeah, for sure. A couple of years ago, yeah. Um, just lost. Didn't know, uh, didn't know where my golf swing was. Didn't know physically if I was you know, capable of getting back to where I was. But... Uh, I mean, a lot's, a lot's transpired, you know, working with Pete, working with Claude, working with Pierce on, uh, on Putton, and then, you know, AC and has done a phenomenal job in the gym, and Aura, Mark Wald, you know, they're all behind the scenes, and they don't get, uh, get enough credit, and, but uh, they've definitely they've revived my career, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of credit to those guys. Um, I think Aura said it best a couple of months ago that if, uh, if we couldn't get the swelling out of my knee, um, everybody was fired, so he's, they've done a great job, and um, I wouldn't be here without them. And what's the shot you're going to remember most from this week? It's a good one. I don't know. I have to get back to you on that one. Right now, it's tough to think. I'm like trying to think. Uh, probably, you know what? Probably that uh, that chip in on for par on 11. I think the first day. Why that one? I, mean, I could have made double. So yeah, save me. Usually when you make double, you don't win a major championship. <laughs> Historically, I think. Back here to eight. It, it's kind of impossible not to hear certain things that get yelled in around. You know, Ricky might throw a fan a little stare down and things like that. And I wonder, does did does any of that get to you? Do you do you hear any of it? Does it you know? Oh, I hear it all. I just don't care. Uh, I mean, that's that's sports, right? They're gonna. Uh, you got to be mentally tough enough not to. Uh, some, I guess, some lady was chanting some stuff, and another guy was shouting at some stuff. But it's you got to be mentally tough enough not to deal with them. It happens in every sport. I'm pretty sure when Tom Brady was playing, I'm sure when he walked into uh, when he was playing the Jets or the Dolphins, he wasn't exactly cheered upon when he, when he ran into the stadium. All right, got time for a couple more. Mike, 12. Brooks, you seemed to get a little emotional as you were walking from the 18th green to the scoring tent. Um, was that relief? Was that suddenly realizing what you had accomplished? Just curious. Yeah, I think it was definitely what I had accomplished. Um, part of my language, but it's all the fucking shit I had to go through. Um, no one knows. No one knows. I think uh, it's been... All the pain. There was a lot of uh, a lot of times where I just couldn't even bend my knee, and um, yeah, it, it felt good. It felt really good. All right, we'll finish up with 13 and seven. Brooks, uh, what do you think about being a dad soon? It's gonna be wild. Um, yeah, it's 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 crazy. The, I feel like these last I don't know five six months uh, have flown by and. Um, it's our, our life's even started to change already, um, and I can only imagine when it gets here. It's, um, but I, I'm super excited. I've, I've kind of wanted to be a dad for for the last few years, and um, you know, these uh, this will be an exciting time for for our life, um, and I can't wait. To, uh, I can't wait for it. Brooks, what do you want to see uh, the PGA Championship coming back to to Oak Hill and, and have you playing in it one day? Like I said, I love New York. It's treated me pretty well. So, um, but three of the five have been in uh, in New York. So uh, I'll come back anytime. Cool. Thanks, Brooks. Congrats Appreciate again. It. Thank you. Thanks, man. That's right.